This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Nokia N97. This is the North American version that's sold in the U.S. by Nokia USA and by other online retailers. The list price is currently $699. It's brand new. It probably will come down in price, and some retailers are already offering it for $600. It's an unlocked GSM phone. It's quad-band GSM, and it has 3G on the U.S. AT&T bands. So you can see the phone has an accelerometer. It has a very large touch screen that's 640 by 360 pixels. It's a higher resolution than the iPhones. It measures three and a half inches across. And this runs Symbian with S60 5th edition, which is the touch screen edition of Nokia's user interface. Press that button here. You get to the programs that you're used to seeing on the Nokia phone. Scroll here. You really do have to use the scroll bars because otherwise you're scrolling in the opposite direction you'd expect if you're grabbing in the middle of the page, which is funny. In some places it scrolls just like the iPhone and touch for 3D phones, and in other places you have to use the scroll bars. But it's responsive, it's not laggy. Let's see again, rotation here. And we'll open up so you can see the three row QWERTY keyboard. The keyboard is very flat. Nokia did that to try to keep the device thin. It does have a D-pad, which is good for compatibility with S60 3rd edition applications that don't know about touchscreens. The keys are unusual. It feels almost like tapping on a touchscreen. They move just a little bit, and it takes a very light touch to type. Since it takes a light touch, it's actually pretty easy to type on the keyboard. I know some reviews have complained about the keyboard, but it's really not that bad to get typing on pretty quickly. The space bar is located over here on the right side, which is a little weird, but after 20 minutes, I got used to it without a problem. I suppose it's helpful for those people who have smaller hands and who hate trying to reach to the center to hit the space bar. Since there are only three rows of keys, you have to hit the function key here to hit the numbers up top. Though the phone is smart, it knows in context if you're in a field that only accepts numbers, you don't have to hit the function key first to get numbers to enter. Take a look around the phone. It has a front-facing camera, it has a proximity sensor and an ambient light sensor up here. Call, send, and end buttons that are touch sensitive. These are not mechanical buttons. This over here is the one that opens up your programs menu or takes you back to the programs and home screen menu if you're in an application. On the side here we have the screen lock unlock slider, which sometimes takes two slides to unlock. It's a little weird micro USB connector. This is used for both charging and syncing. And there's a little light here that tells you when it's charging. Power button up top, three and a half millimeter stereo headset jack. Volume buttons and dedicated camera keys here. Let's take a look at the slider mechanism. Here's the back. They've actually got a little protective baffle here that lists the specs of the phone. It's different and it's protecting a ribbon cable that's inside. We're surprised that there's an exposed ribbon cable but at the same time the design does protect it. This is the nicest slider you've ever felt. It's really solid. It locks positively. It's, it's just kind of fun to keep sliding it in and out. No wobble whatsoever. Very well done, Nokia. Let's compare the N97 to the HTC Touch Pro 2 which is out in Europe and probably will be out with U.S. carriers sometime later this year. They are similar phones. They have large touch screens. This one has an even larger touch screen. It's the highest res on the market at 800 by 480 pixels. They are both fairly large phones. The Touch Pro 2 is bigger, particularly it's wider. They both have slide-out keyboards. The Nokia is tilts only. It doesn't go flat, whereas the HTC model does flat and you have a tilt. The tilt position on this one is not quite as sturdy. There's a bit of wobble, as you can see. Flaps like a barn door just a little bit, whereas this one is super steady. And let's take a look at the N97 compared to Nokia Express Music 5800, the first 5th edition touchscreen phone. You can see the Express Music is a bit smaller. It does not have a slide-out keyboard. Yet it's just about as thick. 
This is a lot lighter. It's more plasticky. Though this one is made mostly of plastic. It has a sturdier kind of feel to it. The N97 features an active home screen here that's all new for Nokia phones. In fact, the Express Music 5800, which was the first 5th edition touchscreen Nokia phone, doesn't have this either. You've got the usual S60 quick launcher here. You can set which programs are up here. And you've got the clock, and you can access profiles just by tapping right here. You tap on the little Bluetooth symbol right at the top, too. You can actually get the Bluetooth settings, and same for Wi-Fi. If Wi-Fi is turned on and you have the Wi-Fi symbol there. You've got email over here to list any new emails that you have. And the email program actually works quite well on this, including IMAP idle constant checking of email. You've got photo caller ID dialing over here. Weather plug-in. Let's take a look at that really quick, because it's pretty cool. This is AccuWeather weather gives you the forecast, temperature graph, weather maps, and more. And then we've got Facebook here too, which scrolls with the latest updates from your friends on Facebook. <laughs> Phone has a GPS. It works pretty well. It's better than older Nokia phones in that respect. It comes with Nokia Maps. It also works with Google Maps. Nokia Maps includes a 90-day free trial of spoken turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Maps and POIs themselves are free. You don't have to pay a subscription fee for those. Take a look at Maps. It works in both directions. And then you have options, obviously, for zooming. And you can choose your map mode to be 3D satellite hybrid. Take a look at the satellite view. And it's downloading that data over the air. You can preload maps onto the phone. It has 32 gigs of storage and a micro SD card slot. So you can preload maps if you don't want to use the data connection. But right now we're downloading over the air. The phone has an FM radio, video player, real player. It can play flash video. It comes with a couple of video streams. You can watch 20th Century Fox, movie trailers, Reuters, news, YouTube, of course, and a couple of others. It works, it works very well over Wi-Fi. It can get a little pixelated when watching over 3G on AT&T's network. Let's take a look at the web browser. While it's loading, it shows the navigation controls here, and then it goes to full screen mode, unlike the 5800, where you have to tap twice just to get to full screen mode every time. So we really like that. If you want to bring up the controls, you can do that just by tapping on that symbol. And then here's a quick launch. So you've got bookmarks, add bookmarks, look for keywords, reload, send a URL, and more. So we're going to take a look at our bookmarks and visit our website. So here it is showing our web page. It loaded in about 12 seconds or so. Not unlike iPhone load speeds. As you can see, it's really easy to scroll. It has kinetic scrolling. And text is legible thanks to the large display. You can actually read without zooming in, assuming you have fairly good eyes. One of the cool things about the phone is it has a 5 megapixel camera. Autofocus Carl Zeiss lens, and it can shoot VGA video at 30 FIPS and widescreen video also. It's got a camera lens cover, which everybody's going to appreciate, and a dual LED flash. It does not have a xenon flash for some reason. If you slide that open, it automatically launches the camera application. It uses the entire screen as the viewfinder, and you have your usual extensive set of Nokia options for taking pictures, including white balance and things like that takes really good pictures and particularly good video. Definitely takes better video than even the N95, which is pretty impressive. It was a hard camera to beat. So that's the Nokia N97. Visit Mobile Tech Review to read our full review of the phone.